Hello everyone, today you're going to learn everything that you need to know when working with environment variables within Jupyter Notebook. Let's get started. The first thing to know is that environment variables aren't scary. They're just key value pairs. So for instance, the key is username and the value is Leo Smiggle for this instance. And you pass these key value pairs into applications or your operating system to change the behavior at runtime. So for instance, you might want to pass in an API key for some various API subscription service that you're using. But the first thing we want to know is let's how to read our environment variables to make sure that we're setting them properly. And there's really two ways to, well, there's three ways here, but a real easy way to do it is to print env in the Unix-like machines, set in Windows machines, or if you're running Jupyter Notebook, you can just use the percent env magic command. So let's take a look at these examples. So you'll see here that I've typed print env at my uh, terminal on my bash shell and you, I get all of my environment variables, simple enough. You can do the same thing with set on the command prompt in Windows. And finally, I opened up Google Colab, type percent env and uh, printed out all of the environment variables in the Google Colab notebook. Now that we know how to read them, the next thing we wanna do is learn how to set them. Well, we can either set them directly or read from a file. Setting them directly is just more temporary in nature and obviously reading from a file. You know, if you wanna save an API key or something like that, that's how you can do it. Uh, and we'll cover that in a second. So first things first, to set it directly, you can import OS and use os.environ and set the uh, you know key uh, value pair. And to just to, to make note, you'll notice they're all what my keys are always capital with underscores at the convention because uh, these are case sensitive. So you'll do want to make sure that you're using the proper naming conventions, key value pair, easy enough. The next thing and arguably the easier way to do it is if you're actually within Jupyter Notebook, you can use that percent env magic uh, that we uh, discussed earlier and just type in the key value pair. So here I've created one for my magic bar equals my value, or you can use the set env, they essentially do the same thing. And now I type percent env and it prints out both of these uh, both of these uh, environment variables, simple enough. Now, what happens if we want to store them, right? Well, the most conventional way is to create a .env file. You know, we just call them .env files that we store these key value pairs in so we don't have to remember them or keep typing them in. And uh, one thing to note, is that there's actually a package called python.env that reads these and if you want to save them to your github or, or wherever you can actually use something like git crypt so you can actually put your api key in save these to you know github and encrypt them so you never have to worry about losing your keys or forgetting you know if you switch a machine to have have them so anyways installation uh, we simply use pip to install it into our virtual environment i do have a video on virtual environments i'll link that uh, you know, in the description below and provide a card. And if you ever want to pass an operating system command directly from within Jupyter Notebook, you can just prepend the bang or exclamation mark and just type bang pip and then install python.env and that'll install this package into your environment. Now to, now all we need to do is create that .env file. We want to create a .env file with our various key value pairs. So if you wanted an API key, you just do API underscore key and then give it the API key and then you'd be able to read, you know, whatever it is you want, right? So there's no limit to how many uh, key value pairs, uh, you know, reasonably <laughs> that, that you have. Obviously disk, disk space and other limitations uh, are, you know, if you want to call me on that one, but you get the point. You can have as many as you want, essentially. All right. Now, once we have our .m file, which is located in the same directory as our Jupyter Notebook, we can load it. So you'll see here, we can import load.env from .m, which is a package we just installed, and then we just call it, right? And the key is we don't actually have to provide it a file name because it's conventional or standard to use the .m file as the name, and then it'll automatically load everything in. And you'll notice that we have this my other variable, which is the uh, you know, the second variable we loaded uh, in here, right? Because we already had my value from the uh, os.environ. So my other var, you know, it printed it out. Great. We know that uh, that loaded uh, successfully. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know. Some tips, again, make sure you understand that it's, you know, these are case sensitive. It's best practice to, and conventional to use all uh, uppercase and underscore with descriptive names. And if you want to save your .m files, uh, go ahead and use something like git crypt, and then you can keep all of your uh, n files in 
uh, GitHub or GitLab or wherever you're storing this. So hopefully you like this video. If you did, please let me know if you like this different version. It was more of a presentation version versus me just typing through Jupyter Notebook. If you actually like to watch me type in Jupyter Notebook, instead of doing this presentation format, let me know. I'm trying to get a feel for uh, you know, what I'm going to be doing next and how you want to see it and have it presented because there's going to be a lot of new content coming soon. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.